How you doing everybody? This is me, Waddles the Scientist, and in today's video, we're gonna run an experiment. Some of the most recent Minecraft snapshots have completely reworked the process of upgrading to Netherite. The question today is pretty simple. Is it too hard? Are you one of the people who's been saying it's too hard? Or do you like the new process? Let me know your take down below, and let's do this. First things first today, because this is a brand new mechanic and potentially might make it into the game just like this, I think it's a smart idea to do a little bit of background. If you're insanely out of the loop or immensely and dangerously confused, you won't be for long. The absolute basics, which I'm sure we all know, have been exactly the same since their release in Minecraft 1.16. Now this is how things would remain from the release of Minecraft 1.16 all the way up until January 24th, 2023. Enter Snapshot 23W04A. In Snapshot 23W04A, an intriguing change was made. A brand new item called the Netherite Upgrade Smithing Template was added to the game, and an interesting way to get this item was added as well. As of this snapshot, if you've got your eye on the prize, and that prize is that sweet, sweet Netherite pickaxe, first things first, make a nether portal and go in. After that, because of course we're running this thought experiment in your long-term survival world, you're going to scavenge the nether high and low for a piglin bastion, of course in 100% survival, without any commands at all. After you've successfully located a bastion, fingers crossed you're going to be able to find one of these items inside of one of the chests. The specific item that you'd be looking for is this netherite upgrade item right here. It looks like, well it looks like netherrack if used with diamond. Now in this first snapshot, when it was kind of shockingly implemented, you only had a 5% chance at finding this item inside of any of the Piglin Bastion chests. Now sure, Piglin Bastions do come with a lot of chests, but 5%? I mean look, the Piglins keeping that extra 5% for themselves? That's an enormous difference. Now this whole 5% thing would be the consistent rule unless you can find a treasure room inside of your Piglin Bastion, which after doing a little bit of research, I'm not sure if there's going to be one in every single bastion. For this little experiment, let's just go ahead and say I found one of those smithing templates inside of that bastion over there. The next step would be go over to a smithing table with my diamond thing that I want to upgrade. Throw this into the smithing table, throw that there, and then throw a netherite ingot to actually upgrade this, use it, and the ingot's gone, and that upgrade template is gone. But at least I have this armor. It looks good. With such seemingly low odds of actually finding this thing in that initial snapshot and taking into account that there are like nine different things that you might want to consider upgrading to netherite, it sounds bad. It sounds bad until you find out that there is actually a crafting recipe for this thing too. Except you're not going to be able to craft this thing for the start. If you want to craft one of these things, you're going to need to have one of those things, seven diamonds, and one piece of netherrack, interestingly. We take one of the most valuable things, one of the least valuable things, and this interesting thing, combine them together, and there we go, we just duplicated it. From just one of these things, with enough materials, we could actually create enough smithing templates to upgrade our entire set to netherrack. The follow-up snapshot, 23W05A, changed a little, but really not a lot. Inside of 23W05A, the netherite upgrade smithing template was made a whole lot more common. They actually doubled the chance that you're going to have at finding this thing inside of the Piglin Bastion. So checking out what we have on the Minecraft wiki, not taking into account the fact that we will always find another right upgrade templates inside of the treasure room, if we look at the odds here, inside of every single random bastion chest, we're going to have about a 10% chance at finding another right upgrade smithing template. On average, of course, that means you check 10 chests for one template. Before we jump into the game, in survival and put it all to the test, I thought it would be a nice idea to get a little bit of context from you guys, the community, and see what you think about upgrading to netherite in Minecraft 1.19 and the new method. Now since I made these polls, I haven't looked at the results of the polls, I don't really know what to expect. We start right here with just a basic lead-in slide, you know, to set the tone. Moving into the next one, have you ever gotten netherite in survival? 83% yes, 17% no. Ah. <sighs> Okay, I can't lie, that, that makes sense. I would kind of expect that. So we keep that in mind for the results of all of the rest of the polls. We might have people voting here who have never actually done this themselves. Have you ever mined for ancient debris in Minecraft survival? 86 yes, 14 no. I thought it would be an interesting idea to figure out how people are actually usually mining for ancient debris. Overwhelmingly so, we have beds. And that other reply box that I <laughs> can't show you because some people got real creative down there. The most common other answer was TNT. 
I don't know how I completely forgot about that. Next up, the big question. Is it easy to get netherite in 1.19? And overwhelmingly, people say yes. I would agree with this option right here. I think it is insanely easy, generally speaking, to get netherite in 1.19. Like, literally, go down deep in the nether, blow up a couple beds. You'll have enough ancient debris in, like, no time. Do you like the current process of upgrading the netherite? And uh, yeah, this makes sense. What can I say? The people like something nice and easy and even relaxing. And uh, nice, easy, relaxing? That's how I describe upgrading the netherite right now. And finally here, do you like the new way of upgrading the netherite? So it's kind of a split field. If we just throw out that 32%, we got 46 to 26. Uh, overwhelmingly, people are liking it. But that's a significant chunk of people that don't like it. Take into account the fact that a lot of people just haven't seen it quite yet, and that could almost be a split vote. That extra context, it's interesting. And also very interesting is the like button. Uh, down below the video, you gotta see what it looks like. Check it out, and then when you tap it, watch what actually happens. Stuff is insane. The very final thing that I think it would be smart to do before we actually run our experiment here is do a little bit of math. Let's talk about diamonds. How many diamonds do you need to make a full set of diamond armor? I think that number is 24. 24 diamonds for a full set of diamond armor. Okay, check. Now, how about a full set of diamond tools? That's going to be three for the pickaxe. Then we're going to have three more for the axe. Then we're going to have two more right there for the hoe. Three, three, and two, that's eight. Nine, ten for the sword. And then one more for the shovel. So, 11. We keep that 35 number in mind and move on. Next up, netherite upgrade template. So, when you start, if you find one of these things, you will need 10 more templates total. 10 more templates at seven diamonds a piece that is 70 diamonds now this is of course assuming you're really really unlucky and can only find one smithing template so 35 plus the 70 that's going to equal 105 diamonds total for a full set of netherite one thing that i think is interesting to note is behind all of these changes we have no change to the amount of netherite that you actually need to get to upgrade to netherite armor it's still one ingot per piece. So 11 ingots total. And so the experiment with our goal of finding a netherite upgrade template. In mainly survival Minecraft, we're gonna slide over to the nether, try and locate a bastion, see how long that takes, and then move into that bastion and loot the whole thing. Hopefully, and fingers crossed, we're gonna be able to find at least one smithing upgrade template inside of that bastion. If we don't, well, we'll talk about that when we get there. This supplies for this experiment. I, I decided what I would do is go ahead and cut out that initial survival grind. And let's just say we have decent diamond armor. We have protection four on the helmet, protection four on the chest plate. Leggings, same thing. And finally, boots, exact same thing. You take into account the fact that you need a lot of diamonds to find all this stuff. And if I was going to do that whole grind today, I, it would be a lot longer. So aside from some other random supplies, we're going to need some weapons. For this process, we will take a diamond sword with sharpness 5, so a little geared up, and a bow with, of course, the best enchantment and power 5. For the purpose of this experiment, I also armed myself with some more generic supplies. I reserve the right to get more supplies if I forget something. All right, so this is essentially a fresh world. I haven't seen what the nether looks like at all, which means I don't know where a piglin bastion is. First things first, we're going to need to make a nether portal, jump into the nether, and try and locate a piglin bastion. This can, of course, be hit and miss. Every single world is different. In some worlds, you might jump into the nether and immediately, boom, a bastion right in front of you. Uh, meanwhile, in other worlds, you might have to explore a little bit more. I'm thinking from the looks of things in this world, explore a little bit more might be exactly what we need to do. I'll time it. We'll see how long it takes to actually find this thing. In my opinion, the best way to find a piglin bastion has got to be the strider. We get down low by the lava ocean, jump on a strider, and sail around. So obviously, for this experiment, we're uh, taking out a lot of the grind. Initially, you're going to have to grind in your world, grind up to diamonds, you know, maybe go into the nether and find the materials, get a saddle, you know, things like that. Eventually, though, once you're to this point, can we find a bastion easily? Mm hmm. <gasps> that's it. That's it. That's it. Um. Okay. So on the clock, I got about three, four minutes. I would say that's like pretty lucky. I don't think I usually find a bastion so quickly. 
So next up, what we want to do is park our Strider friend next to the Bastion. It's just nice and safely. What I think I'll do is I'll make a small room over here. This will be, you know, the getaway car. Bruh. Idea, we jump off of you, you stay right there, and, and you'll stay looking at me dreamily forever. And there we go. You're safe. So now at this point, I guess I should maybe like say what I think is going to happen or what. If we can move into this Bastion and find one of these things, which I kind of think is unlikely. But if we can move into this Bastion and find one, things might not be so bad. The strategy here with the piglins is pretty straightforward. We find the brute, we put the boat down, we put the brute inside of the boat. If not, I run. We try and just move into this thing and cause as few problems as possible until we can capture the brutes. Hey, it's a piglin, piglins. How, how are we doing piglins? Hey, by the way, I'm doing this on hard difficulty. I don't know if that's irrelevant or what, but uh, yeah, hard difficulty. So, I got a chest right in the middle. I really want to check this chest. I didn't bring a hopper or anything. Where are the brutes at? <laughs> um, this is like none. Now that we're here inside of the Bastion, I don't think there's much of a point in doing like a timer or anything like that. It takes me however long it takes me. It doesn't really matter. Lava, lava, lava. This is an interesting chest. Um, all right, I'll try and remember that. Lava, lava, lava. Ooh, Piglin Brute. I knew I was going to find one of you eventually. Disgusting. You wait there. Excuse me, my lad. I don't mind to be just moving through your home cautiously, my lad. Don't, don't worry about it. I just could try to get rid of the lava for you. Get rid of the lava for you. I don't know how exactly far this is coming from. Just block it off right there, right? That should be good. You know, I guess if I were to have thought a little bit more strategically, I could have brought, like, hoppers into this thing or something. And maybe with hoppers, I could peek at the materials. Uh, the loot a little bit better. Next up, what I'm thinking, though, is we move higher and higher in the Bastion. Uh, one thing that I think I know for sure is if we go higher up in this Bastion, we should hopefully be able to find a couple more chests. Oh, yes, a room, a room. Okay, so up here we have a room with a couple more brutes. It's uh, kind of disgusting. Uh, but he doesn't see me. He, he doesn't know I exist. <laughs> hey, big little brute, up here, up here. Come on, man. Uh, there's another one right over there. Anybody? Anybody? Oh, yeah, yeah, you? Mm, okay. Uh, Pathfinding and boat. <laughs> not so scary. Now this one that's down here, I think it might be trapped. Uh, look, oh, no, it's not trapped. It's going to be able to get up here, I think. Maybe. Mm, uh, okay. Okay. Well, uh, that is a problem. I got myself into a small predicament here. The Piglin Brute, uh, it does know about me in here, but I'm kind of trapped. So I, I put my last boat down over there. Here's what I'm thinking we could do, though. I plan for this exact moment. All we need to do is craft another boat and... Oh, never mind. It might be in the boat. Okay, so at this point, in our little experiment today, I've captured a lot of... A lot of piglins. I think at this point, there's no turning back. It's gonna get bad. Let's go. You go. You're gone. I'm sorry, all of you. You all have to go. The loot is mine. I'm not taking any risks. And you too. You didn't even know it's coming. Bye bye. Night vision is running out, so go ahead and drink that and loot. No template there. Uh, no template there, but that's great. Of course, in any standard survival run, you'd be taking all this loot, but uh, for now, we don't really care about it. I don't know how that loot table is affected by double chests, but double chests and no luck. All right, so from this point, we're going to need to go back down our staircase and navigate back down to the lowest part of this structure. I'm not sure if that chest in the middle is considered a treasure room chest or if it's just like a Hogland stable chest or something. So, uh, strategy. We put a boat right there, we open this chest, and would you take a look at that? Nothing. Just in case. I don't know what to expect out here, but we'll go ahead and make another boat and move out to the middle. Before we check that chest right there, what I want to do is move around the side of this thing and see if we can find any other chests and maybe check those too. Aha, uh -huh. exactly. E exactly. Here's a chest and... Ooh, that's amazing. That's so close, but it's not what we need. Why do you guys not care when I open a chest? Do you have to see me open the chest? I forget. All right, so at this point, I think it's go time. We'll go ahead and pop this golden apple and open this chest. And ugh, that is really disappointing. Not that any of them actually care, but let's get out of here. You see, at this point in our little experiment, this is where things get a lot more complicated because I've already found one bastion and bastions aren't the most common structure. That means I'm probably gonna have to go pretty far to find the next bastion. And then fingers crossed, uh, hopefully I'm able to find the upgrade template there.
And so, at that point, I kept walking and walking and walking until eventually, 10 minutes later, in fact, more like 12 minutes later, I found Bastion number two. So that's beautiful, but the whole exploring the nether, I mean, exploring the nether is already dangerous, but uh, with the whole lava and the ups and downs and everything, it makes it a whole lot more tedious too. Exploring. Exploring in the nether. Raiding a bastion. Wandering aimlessly so you can raid a bastion. After speeding things up a little bit and just checking out every chest inside of this bastion, bastion number two. Uh, like 25 to 30 minutes in now at this point and there's no luck nothing here two bastions down and absolutely nothing the thought of leaving that second bastion and exploring again for potentially even longer i okay. hate it exploring aimlessly inside of the nether is not only dangerous but like i said it's kind of annoying what we'll do is i'll teleport myself really far away we'll locate a third bastion and just see if it may be inside of this one we would have gotten lucky so obviously, this part is breaking the whole survival immersion thing at this point, but uh, a third of Bastion. And there it is. A third Bastion. Over like 10,000 blocks away, but a third Bastion. And we have one. Now we would be able to craft more. I think the big problem here, as I kind of suspected, is because of the randomized odds, it might be a little bit difficult to consistently find one of these upgrade templates. And I think that's good. But what I don't think is good is exploring the nether aimlessly for a long time on a strider while trying to dodge guests and all the other dangerous mobs. In conclusion, a solution. I'm a big fan of incentivizing going into the Piglin Bastion and actually needing to find something to upgrade nethering. I like the process itself. I actually also like the rarity of this item. I think it's really good to not be in every single Bastion. Personally, the least enjoyable part of this process is wandering through the nether aimlessly hoping to find a Bastion. In my opinion, the resolution of this problem is actually insanely, insanely simple. Cartographer. But not just like plain old cartographer villager. I think admittedly that would be maybe a little bit lazy. Instead of a cartographer villager, how about a cartographer item? And this item would be located in every single bastion. If you've messed with villagers or thought of doing a lot of exploring in your world, then you probably discover the fact that cartographer villagers, when leveled up enough, will actually offer maps that lead you to different structures if they're in the right dimension. Bruh. But what I don't like here is the idea of a map. No map inside of the Bastion, that's lazy. But what I do like is the idea of a compass, a Bastion compass. There are two ways the devs could go about this one. Option one, it makes sure a Bastion compass generates in one of the chests to somewhere in every single Bastion. Option two, the Piglin Brew, an insanely dangerous mob that literally hates you. You take it out and you don't get anything. Unless you take it out and it drops a compass. Let's say this compass was a bastion compass. Because there's a bastion literally right over here, the compass would be locking onto it. But as I start to move away from that bastion and maybe get closer to a different one, eventually the compass needle would flip and start pointing me towards that new bastion. Look, in my eyes, it's a win-win. It not only keeps netherite a little bit more tricky to get, but it also eliminates the annoying, aimless wandering of the nether. First things first, you're going to need to find a bastion no matter what. If you're lucky, that's it. That's the bastion. If you're unlucky, at least there's something to help you find the next one. So what do you think about this netherite process and maybe that idea? Let me know down below. I hope you enjoyed the experiment. And for more videos, like it, smash subscribe, and drop a like. Big thank you to my patrons, the Swoopy Louvers, Bill W, Noodle Pork, and Tanner B. I appreciate the support. It's been me, Waddle. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.